I did science because I was good at it. I started out in physics and math. But as a young graduate student, Paul Greengard was fascinated by the mechanism of nerve cells. Ultimately, his insights led to a now classic PNAS paper published in 1972. It would help revolutionize our understanding of how the brain functions. When I started my work, it was thought that a nerve cell is a nerve cell and they're all identical, which is manifestly incorrect. And as my graduate studies evolved, I realized that a very exciting and essential area of work was to understand the molecular underpinnings of our nerve cells function. For 60 years or so, there was a debate going on about whether communication between synapses was chemical or electrical. And the chemical story won in almost every case. But there were a number of people, uh, Paul being one of them, Jimmy Schwartz another, myself, who were drawn to the intrinsic fascination of understanding the brain, understanding, you know, how the human mind works. And there were different approaches. Paul came from a chemistry background and used the biochemical approaches. I originally was interested in psychiatry. I wanted to understand memory storage. And Paul's work and our work converged. Greengard revealed a key player in the mechanism of the crucial neurotransmitter dopamine. He showed that the enzyme adenylate cyclase has a critical role in how dopamine works. And this paper is a clear-cut example of how a neurotransmitter works through such a signal transduction pathway. Paul did in this paper was he took the lessons learned from uh, studying metabolism of, of liver and how did he regulate um, uh, glycogen metabolism by uh, adrenaline or epinephrine and, and applied this, this concept to, to the brain. And, and this was really uh, unheard of. Wow, there's a unity of knowledge that's emerging that applies to the brain. So people were scared off by the flow of electric current and anatomy all of a sudden got interested in it because their molecule could be important to mental processes. So that began to excite the biological community. As you could begin to define things in terms of genes and molecules, it opened up the study of the nervous system to the alien hordes. And they came in and we welcomed them. No, I'll never forget the first day um, when I came to Paul's lab. At the time, I had a ponytail. It was, you know, it was very 70s. The community there was uh, incredibly uh, vibrant and intellectual and stimulating. Paul was interested in treatment. I thought treatment was a little bit further away. And he early on began to look for opportunities to develop drugs or targets for drugs. I think that one big area of advance will be in taking, A, in getting all this information, and that's now happening very, very rapidly, and B, then utilizing that information to develop drugs that selectively target one or another nerve cell type. Yet despite decades of findings, big advances in treatment have remained elusive. Greengard hopes his protégés can find new insights into complex mental disorders. Dr. Greengard's lab in particular was of interest. Depression and Alzheimer's the research that they do here is really fantastic. You know, he's an inspiration, um, a giant in the scientific and the neuroscience world. So it's been, it's been an honor. One thing I've learned in Paul's lab, um, you want to be right most of the time. You, you want to have everything well controlled. But if you're, every experiment works um, the way you think it should, then you're not going to be making discoveries. Um, and so that's what Paul uh, you know, encouraged in us. I'd like to think I'm not an arrogant person by nature, but I never had any doubt that my ideas were correct. You know, and even though I got a lot of flack from a lot of my colleagues, uh, I, th I think though someday they'll know this. I didn't know we'd prove it in my lifetime. I suspected that, you know, 50 years after my death, this would all be proven, but because the techniques that evolved were so powerful, it was possible for us to demonstrate the validity of our thinking 
much more quickly than I had anticipated.